right, babies, it's that time again. Oh yeah. And it's a little busy right here, so I'm gonna hang on a second. surroundings <laughs> Lord Jesus have mercy I have been listening to new country music <clears throat> so much lately I actually had it on all last night as I was sleeping or trying to sleep It just blesses me so much. I just... One thing I like is there's... Evidence of Christian faith in it. I like that. And mostly I just like the upbeat, positive, catchy melodies. Which are very similar to the... dance pop music I've been listening to for years so yeah I'm enjoying that and sometimes the relationships that they talk about in there it gets me like really sad and I started, started crying because I've screwed up my relationships in my life and God is my primary relationship don't want to be a source of grief to him and I don't want to go to a church where people are just not <laughs> sensitive to the Holy Spirit I just can't do it so I was just I was in tears. I was just like... Um, but it felt good. It felt good to cry and... Know that God was hearing me and... Is the means of my release. And it's up to me to figure out how I can better be in a position of fluid communication. Uh, yeah. So we went into um, Joshua 20. And there's some crazy story in there. Or not really a story, but it's a it's a rule that's like some I don't even want to talk about it. <clears throat> if you're curious, just look at Joshua 20 and be prepared not to be blessed. So I went into the Gospel of Jesus the Christ, um, chapter 129, and it's the familiar story, narrative, we don't know if it actually happened or not, of Jesus bringing Peter, James, and John <clears throat> up a mountain to pray. And he gets transfigured in the form of like white lightning, <laughs> as George Jones would say. Um, 
And then, of course, Peter misunderstands the situation and wants to build the temple for Jesus and Moses and Elijah, who join the fun and supposedly talk to Jesus about his upcoming death and resurrection. It all seems a little too quaint for my taste. I think Jesus had an idea what was going on. I don't think he needed Moses and Elijah to come talk to him. That's just me. I could be wrong. Uh, but so what's what what can we glean from this narrative well I think it I think what it does is it brings attention to the fact that we are this paradoxical being we are both earthly and heavenly. So if we're like Peter is depicted in the story and we are too focused in on sort of a, a limited mindset about the whole thing like trying to capture what's being observed instead of allowing it to unfold and to join in its beauty for the moment and then let it pass and then be open for yet another moment of either quiet meditation or mind-numbing glory. Yeah, basically... <laughs> Um, that's how I look at it. And we'd certainly have enough mind-numbing nonsense. churches what am I thinking of when I say that I'm thinking of sort of like the Peter response you know all this kind of busy activity that's trying to be about God's business when really he wants us to be still so that we can radiate his light. And I just, I refuse, <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to be a part of a church that is like that. I told God yesterday, uh, I said, you're just going to have to hook me up with a decent church. I can't. I can't do that. I can't sit and watch people run around like mice in a maze. God has seated us in heavenly places sharing his authority with us. I can't.
can't do it. 